It's 817, and lo- really looking forward to a really fun and funny night this Friday night, DeVos Performance Hall, because Leanne Morgan will be in town to, uh, for uh, her uh, Big Panty Comedy Tour. I love that. Leanne is my guest. <laughs> the sweetest southern voice this side of Bean Station, Tennessee. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you angel. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for having me, my darling. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you getting up early and uh, talking to us about your show. Well, you don't. Well, I am tickled to death to be coming. I've never been to Grand Rapids. Okay. All right. Well, you're going to love it. A lot of fun. And, the, and every time I, I was talking about you coming into town, then... So many people were on Facebook and messaging saying, I love her. I can't wait to see her. So, uh, and, oh. I, and I went online to look at tickets and, you know, like in the orchestra section, there are about 50 left maybe. And in the mezzanine and balcony areas, about 50 left. So if you think, if you want to see Leanne, you better gobble them up really quick because uh, you're got you know, you know the joy of your comedy is that you just talk about normal stuff that that people relate to because of your life and raising a family and raising your kids and raising monsters that may have turned into friends of yours <laughs> well yeah, I, I've always said I wish I could be like Jerry Seinfeld and talk about cotton balls, but <laughs> Instead, I just when I started this thing 22 years ago, I was had little children and I just you know birthed three and four and a half years and you know that yeah. wow um, gave me a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about and I, it just I'm just more of a storyteller about all these kids and their daddy and dogs and <laughs> menopause and Weight Watchers and all that. Yeah. I really just talk about what's happening. Well, and the way you started was really f- fun. It's a great story about, um, you know, uh, you're, you're raising kids and for a little extra money and stuff and to stay busy, you were doing home jewelry shows and, and stuff. Every, everybody <laughs> yeah. relates. Everybody relates to that, right? Oh, you well, I think so. You know, when you're when I was coming up having these children, I really wanted to stay home with them. And we we were in our late twenties and didn't have anything. And my husband is very tight. On top of that, and um, <laughs> and I need to get my hair highlighted. I'll just tell you. So I um I and I really didn't even care anything about jewelry. But my friend was in that business, and she said you could sell jewelry and. And be with women, you know, meet women and have um, a good time and you can make a little money on the side. And so I started selling jewelry in people's houses like Tupperware. Yeah. But it was jewelry. And we had a ball. And I kind of developed a shtick. And every night, you know, I look back on it and it was perfect. I was in front of my demographic every night having a ball with these women. And we'd eat dip and some brownies and you know we sell some jewelry and <laughs> and that led to a comedy career but you know i always had wanted to do comedy before that but you know as a child i just knew i was going to do something in show business really but you know yeah but you know, life you know takes different turns and i get i think being from a little rural area farming community in middle tennessee i just never i just i I dreamed about it, but I didn't think I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know, you know, me going to L.A. at 18 by myself. Well, I, it would have scared me to death. Yeah. And I kept thinking, you know, my parents wanted me to go to college, and you know, I just felt like I'd do the traditional thing, and um, and I did want to marry and have babies. That was the most important thing. So anyway, it all turned out all right. It did. But at the time, <laughs> I um, I just dreamed about doing it. I really did. Well, you, this dream, I mean, you were always, you, I don't know if you sold any jewelry, but you were certainly cracking great jokes at your parties and stuff. That <laughs> I was schlepping some jewelry. Let me tell you, women love a 1999 pair of earrings when they're having a good time and eating dip, you know? <laughs> but, I mean, it's like uh, being discovered on a on a. Uh, the uh, stu- uh, the uh, uh, yeah, soda fountain uh, 
a stool at Schwab's drugstore and in Hollywood or something. You were kind of discovered selling jewelry at these parties. And someone said you should do stand up, and and then the rest was history. But talk raising your kids. I mean, trying to combine both things had to be really difficult. How'd your how'd your kids you know deal with all of that? Well, you know, there were different stages in their life where they were fine, and other times where they were like, do not speak my name. Um, when they were in elementary school, oh, they thought it was so fun, and I was on Nick at Night, and the crew came to my house from New York and filmed us because I was in the um, Funniest Mom in America contest. And so they loved all of that, and then – they went through middle school, and they were like, do not talk about me. You know how middle school kids oh, are. Yeah. And I didn't want, you know, and I was scared to death. I, I, so that was a very dry time. And then <laughs> high school, they were like, we don't care what you do. They didn't care, I guess, if they ever saw me again at that point. And and that was, uh, you know, I was able to keep, to go. And then, and then college, they were like, Mom, do whatever you want to do. We're fine. And so it has been a different, it's been a, a journey. And I really, I look back on it. I mean, their daddy's always had a big job traveling and doing uh, he, over parts of the United States for his company. And and then I never had to hire anybody. It's just crazy how it worked out. I would be, he would have, I would have him during the week and then he would take care of him on the weekend so I could go and do shows. Wow. And I did a lot of private corporate things that, you know, to get by to, uh, that would just be one night out. And, you know, I never, I did comedy clubs, but I never did a lot of them because I, I did want to raise my own children. And if I had, you know, done comedy clubs like Roseanne Barr, I, w- I wouldn't have been able to do that. So right. it just all worked out. It did. There yep. were some hairy times. There were some hairy times, but I was very forgetful. I'd forget the zoo check, you know, <laughs> because I'd be thinking about a gig trying to get somewhere. But, but it all worked out so beautifully and sweeter than I ever thought it would be. Wow. And then now, now it has blown up, and i got this 100-city tour, yeah. and they, these kids are grown, and they are enjoying it, and they don't need me on a day-to-day basis. And it is just, and sometimes they'll go with me, you know, when they can, uh-huh. and my husband goes when he can. And so it's really, it's just so fun and unbelievable. You're living a blessed, living a blessed life, really, Leanne. Leanne Morgan, comedian Thank that you. I'm talking to it, and you call it the Big Panty Tour. Now you got to explain that. Well, I just like big panties, and you know, I was I was going through my material. I thought, man, I'm talking about my panties a lot, and I think it, it being a woman at 56 <laughs> and going <laughs> has been, you know. Pretty cute in the 80s. I'll just tell you, I was really cute. And I wore tiny panties back then. I just feel like, I, you know, I started going through menopause and perimenopause first. And, you know, the just changes. I don't know. It just kind of, I realized my panty door kind of was like a a map to my life. And I, and that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But anyway, it just, I don't know. And then I saw women bringing extra panties. There was a woman in Evansville, Indiana, and she said, I've got an extra pair of panties in my purse because my husband said, now, if you go and laugh, you might have an accident. Take some extra panties. And I, that was so flattering to me. <laughs> and we took pictures with her big flesh-colored panties that she got at Sam's Club. And I just thought, I think everybody's thinking about their panties. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I called it. And, you know, it's been fun. And, you, and you'd be shocked over this, but half the audience are men. Oh, I believe that. And they come with their wives, and and everybody's um, elbowing each other. Yeah, I can just tell as I'm looking out over that audience, they're elbowing each other, going, "That's you, that's you, <laughs> that's us." That's, me. <laughs> that's got to be so rewarding. It's, it's so rewarding to you because, yeah, you're right. Everybody relates to you, and your degree was in child and family studies. So that. That, that, did that degree yes. prepare you for raising a family and, and uh, creating these kids? Uh, yes, honey. I think it really did. I loved my major, and I was getting um, uh, a degree in, child, in uh, child family studies, but with a concentration in crisis intervention counseling. And I thought if I wasn't going to be a comedian, I wanted to be a therapist. 
And I love people. I love to study people. I like to talk. I'm a talker. And I just think I, I observe, and I, I think it's good for comedy. I can, you know, make a funny story out of what these kids do. And um, and then I also, Lord knows I've made some mistakes. There were things that, um, you know, I let them skip school and go to zoo. I mean, I was pretty fun, but um, but they got an education. <laughs> But their daddy didn't always agree with how I did things. Because I'm always thinking, if he had, if he's at home with them, they'd be in Harvard, but with a nervous tick. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do think child family studies, it helped me. I, I do. I think it helped me being a comedian because I, I loved all that material. And, it, you know, human, pe- human beings are so interesting. Yeah. From our, birth to death, you know. For sure. Elderly, I mean, adolescents. Yeah, I think that all helped me. And let me tell you, the University of Tennessee has been so good to me. I barely got out of there, honey. And I'll never let anybody know what my GPA is. <laughs> but they are so good to have me come and speak. And I, I speak to classes all the time. And I know parents, if they found that out, they'd be like, what is she doing up here? Are we paying tuition for this? But they like for me to go up there and tell little children that everything's going to be all right. And, it, and you get a degree in, you know, basket weaving. And you probably are not going to do anything with that degree. You know, really. I mean, unless you're an engineer or uh-huh. a teacher or a nurse, you know, and little children are frightened. and they So they put me up there and they go, look, she became a comedian. This nut. <laughs> <laughs> you can do anything, doggone it. Just <laughs> you get... can do anything. That's right. Yeah. Just get the degree. Well, I mean, we all relate to you because uh, I have seven kids myself. And what? I know I've been, in th- I've been in therapy for a long time. Uh, and so, Seven. <laughs> and they're, when they're all out of the house, you know, they're all gone. We all have stories. Yeah, I know. Crazy, huh? Oh my gosh, honey. <laughs> that sounds like the Walton. <laughs> Seven. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well, how yummy and precious. How many girls and how many boys? Six girls and one boy. And so, yeah, <gasps> six daughters. At least I have daughters to take care of me in my old age. Oh, honey, yes. Oh, praise God. And they will. You know, girls, mine tend to me and call me and make sure I'm all right. And yeah. my sister and I take care of our mom and daddy. Oh, that's so right. Well, let me tell you, was that boy easy to raise among all those ball of the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was coddled. Yeah, I mean, so does <laughs> 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 I bet he's a sweet husband. Uh, he is. Lord, he's seen horrible things, I bet. Mm. <laughs> well, what about you? Heard I mean, you're horrible things. Yeah, your girls will take care of you, but you're, 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 you have one son? I have one son, and he's got my new grandbaby. Oh, there, um, there you go. Oh, that, I know. Mm. That is great. Best Le- thing that's ever happened to us. Leanne Morgan. <laughs> Can't wait. Friday night, DeVos Performance Hall, 7 p.m., and there are a few tickets left, so if you want to have just a super fun night, uh, get online to Ticketmaster.com or DeVosPerformanceHall.com and get your tickets. Leanne, you are such a joy. Thank you so much, and uh, and have fun when you come to Michigan, okay? All right. Thank you, my darling, and you've been a joy from heaven. Thank you. Thank you. We're at 8.30. 100.5, The River.